Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the Euclidean algorithm. Today we are going to find the greatest common divisor of two integers. Um, here we're dealing with a negative number example, uh, b is equal to negative 156. So this is one that is typically a little bit more involved, I would say, since we have a negative. Um, I'm going to show you the way that my professor taught it to me and then how I do it. And uh, hopefully this will help you. I'm going to move a little bit quickly because I'm assuming most of you, if you're in abstract algebra, you've already had discrete and this process is a little bit familiar to you. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started right away. So the first thing that we're going to look at is we have an A and we have a B value. Our B value is negative. Uh, we want it in the form a, B, or um, in this case, the greatest common divisor is equal to the linear combination of A and B. Um, so we're really looking for that M and N value um, and what our R value is, our remainder, which is also our greatest common divisor, our final remainder. So I'll go ahead and write that R is equal to, we want to find that, um, and we also want to find what M is equal to and we want to know what n is equal to. So we'll keep that off to the side. So the first part uh, in the Euclidean algorithm is we are going to use the division algorithm to get started. So we're going to take a, which is 50, 88, is equal to, we now have negative 156. And we're going to ask ourselves, how many times does negative 156 go into 5,088. So we can go ahead and do that on the calculator. Uh, I did this before I started recording. So uh, my first guess was 30. So if we take 156, and I'm going to leave the negative out for a second, and you'll see why uh, we don't need to include it in our calculation on the calculator. If we take 156 times 30, my first guess, uh, we got 4,680, so not quite. So my second guess while doing this off screen was uh, 32. And 32 got us as close as we could get uh, without going over. So we get 4,992. Okay, let's keep that up on the calculator. First, let's write 32. But here we need to remember, we're dealing with a negative, right? Remember I told you that it didn't matter on the calculator uh, when we didn't have to think about the negative then. Well, we have to think about that negative now. Uh, we know that when we multiply a negative um, by a negative, we get a positive value. So that is the whole purpose of making this 32 negative um, because we wanna reflect on how many times does essentially 156 go into 5,088. So, all right, well, we got that. We definitely want a positive remainder, never want a negative. So it's another reason we have negative 32 rather than positive 32. So let's figure out what our remainder is. Um, I'll just go ahead and subtract 50, 88. It'll be negative, but we know 96. So 96 is our remainder. Great. OK, so the whole purpose of the Euclidean algorithm, uh, again, hopefully you're familiar with it, is that we repeat the division algorithm multiple times until we get a remainder of zero. So here we're going to take our negative 156, and that is going to move into the spot that our 5,088 was in. Uh, we are going to take our remainder, so our 96, and we're going to move that into the spot that our negative 156 was in. So 96 comes here now. And then we ask ourselves the same question. How many times does 96 go into 156? But now here's another point that's a little bit tricky. We're dealing with a negative value on this side of the equal sign. Um, so what would be your guess for our number here? It would be negative in this case um, because we want to figure out how many times 96 goes into negative 156. So um, let's go ahead and try two. Let's see what that gives us. 182. So normally this would not be okay because we want to underestimate. But in this case, since we're dealing with a negative, we want to overestimate. So it can be even smaller, right? So we're going to go ahead and put in 
um, sorry, let me get rid of that, uh, negative two. So now we know that that is equal to 192 and we're gonna subtract, just find that difference. And it's a difference of 36, positive 36, remember. It's very important that we have a positive value as a remainder. Okay, we're gonna um, continue this process, just going down the line. So 96 moves here now, and then we have 36 move into this spot. So how many times does 36 go into 96? Now we're dealing with positives, this is nice, right? Uh, we're gonna underestimate, so let's try to. And that is going to give us 72. And 72, uh, we have a remainder of 24. Okay. Now we're almost there. Let's do 36. It's equal to this. So how many times does 24 go into 36? Well, it only goes in once, right? And we have a remainder of 12. And then we're going to move 24 over here. And then we're going to ask ourselves, how many times does 12 go into 24? Well, we know it goes in two times perfectly. And we're left with a remainder of zero. So great. Now we have all of our remainders. This one, hopefully you should remember, in the Euclidean al algorithm does not matter. We only care about the final R value that was other than zero. Uh, so I'll just write it up here for clarity. R sub one is equal to 96. That was our first remainder that we see here. R sub two is equal to 36. R sub three is equal to 24. And R sub four is equal to 12. Great. So 12 is very important. That is this value right here. So we already found one um, answer to this question. So let's move on to finding our M and N values. I'm going to go ahead and switch the color since this is the uh, second step of the process. So what we do to find our R values is we're going to set all of these equations, <clears throat> excuse me, all of these equations equal to their remainders. Uh, so to do that, we have to do a little bit of math magic here. Uh, just because we have some negatives, we want to pay very careful attention to how we're doing this. So uh, what I like to do is I like to move this component of the equation over. I don't like to make anything negative. Kind of the purpose of this is to make things positive. We want as many positives as we can have. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, we, we know that a negative times a negative gives us a positive, right? Okay, and we're back, sorry about that. <clears throat> so we want this negative 32 that we multiplied in this equation to be positive. But we need to remember that we're dealing with a value of negative 156. This is what's given to us. So we don't wanna change that negative. We really wanna change this negative 32. So we could almost pull that out in front if it helps you visualize it better, where we have, let's do it off to the side, 5,088 is equal to negative 32 times negative 156. That might be a better way to, to look at this problem. Okay, so if we're trying to move this whole part over, we're gonna go ahead and add 32 and negative 156. This is a group, it's going together um, on both sides of the equation. So I'll just write it for consistency. Okay, so we now have 5088 plus 32 um, times negative 156, all right? And that's all equal to 96. And then we're just gonna flip flop these around. We want 96 over here on the left. Um, you'll see why in a second. And then we're left with 5088 plus 32 minus 156 or times rather 156. Okay, so let's go ahead and erase this just to give ourselves some more room. Don't need that anymore. We did the work for it. 
and back to this. So we now have 96 over here. We're just going to rewrite it quickly. 5088 plus 32 times negative 156. Great. OK, so now we're on to the next part, the, uh, the next equation. Uh, so again, over here, we just want to have it in terms of 36. So we'll write that already just to make it a little more simpler. And then we're going to have um, uh, uh, 2 times 96. And then we have minus 156. OK. And then from here, we are going to have 24. So our next remainder is set equal to, uh, here we have 96, I'll write that first, minus 2 times 36. And then we have 12 is equal to, uh, let's see, 36 and minus 1 times 24. All right. Okay, so we got all of our remainders, um, all of our equations in, term of, in terms of our remainders. So that's set up here. Now you'll see why we did that. I'm going to change the color again, uh, just because we're moving to the third step of this process. So with these remainders, uh, we want to go ahead and substitute. This substitution, this back substituting, is going to give us our m and n values. So essentially, we're trying to rewrite all of these equations, these four equations, in terms of what they told us to do, the linear combination of a and b, which is up here. So this form, we're going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to start with uh, the last equation. So 12 is equal to 36 minus 1 times 24. Okay. So we're going to look at what 24 is set equal to. 24 is set equal to 96 minus 2 36s. So let's write that in, substitute it in. 36 minus 1 times 96. Now be careful with your parentheses and your um, negative signs. Very important that you keep track of those. Okay, so we're not going to foil anything. We're not going to try to simplify this all the way because we would just end up with 12 is equal to 12. We want to keep representing this as a linear combination of our A and B values, uh, which we're trying to get back to our 5,088 and our negative 156. That's essentially what back substitution is going to do. It's going to reveal our A, uh, or I'm sorry, our M and N and we'll get back to our a and b. So here, the only thing we really want to simplify um, is we want to figure out how many 96s we have and how many 36s we have. So if we multiply negative 1, we're left with negative 1 96s. And then negative, now this is important, negative times negative when we're dealing with these, um, you could think of them almost as coefficients. Um, when you're dealing with these numbers here, it's okay to, to do the rules for negatives. So negative one times negative two, what does that give us? Positive two. So we have positive two 36s. Now remember, we still have 36 out in front here. So uh, you could write a one just to be, you know, clean about it. So one 36 plus two 36s, gives us a total of three 36s. And then we still have minus one, 96. And that's all still set equal to 12. So great, we have that. Uh, let's go ahead and erase, give us a little more room. OK, so then we're going to move on. We're going to go ahead, I'll rewrite it up here. 12 is equal to 3 times 36 minus 1 times 96, all right? And let's substitute the next one, which is this one right here. So um, uh, I'm sorry, this one. <laughs> here we go. OK, so uh, what is 36 set equal to? We see this here. We're going to do 12 is equal to 3, and then whatever 36 was, 2 times 96 minus 156 
And remember, we still have minus 196 out there. OK. Again, we don't want to simplify this all the way. We just want to kind of reveal this structure, this linear combination structure. So 3 times 2 is going to give us 6, right? 6 is we have so far. Then 3 times negative 156 is going to give us positive 3. This is, be careful about this. We didn't have a coefficient. And I know that's not the proper term, but I like to think of it as that as being a coefficient. We didn't have a coefficient out here, so we're not going to say negative 3 156 is. No, no, we have 3 positive 156 is. Kind of arbitrary to think about um, to have a positive value of negative value, a negative value. Um, but that's what the structure is for this. This is why the remainder is staying positive is so important as well. So, okay, then we have this negative one to uh, 196 out here. So let's simplify that negative one and positive six gives us five, right? Five ninety sixes plus three negative one fifty sixes. So there's our new structure. Still all equal to twelve. All right. Moving on, we have just one more substitution, and we're there. We're at our answer for m and n. I'm just rewriting this. All right. So let's do that last substitution. Uh, we're going to find what 96 was set equal to, plug that in, and we'll get back to our original a and b. So 5 and, let's see, 50, 88 plus 32 times negative 156, right? OK, close parentheses. <laughs> Important to keep track of that. Plus 3 times negative 156. All right, so let's simplify. We have 5 5088s here, or 5088s. Um, we have 5 being multiplied by 32, so let's do that. Uh, we'll do that on the calculator just to keep it clean. 32 times 5 gives us 160. So we have a positive 160 negative 156s. <laughs> And then we have still positive 3, negative 156s. OK, so let's simplify that. Um, let's see. Yes, um, positive 160 plus 3 gives us 163, of course, negative 156s. So that's how many 100, negative 156s we have. And this is how many. 5,088s we have, all equal to 12. OK, so then your m and your n values, according to this structure up here, uh, wherever our a is, m is next to it. So there's m. And wherever our b is, n is next to it. So here's our b, and there's our n. So m is equal to. 5 and n is equal to 163. All right, so there is our solutions. I hope that this was helpful. I'd also like to mention that this is in um, elements of, let me see, elements of modern algebra, eighth edition. Uh, this is question number 3M. I think it is 3M. Yes. Uh, so hopefully this will help if you've been struggling with this problem or just struggling with negative GCDs.